In this current economy, when money is tight and tempers are short, customer service is more important than ever. A new survey by MSN Money and Zogby shows these are the top five companies when it comes to servicing their customers. Author and behavioral expert Beverly Flaxington knows exactly what those companies do to ensure that their service is top notch. She's written a book. It's called Understanding Other People, The Five Secrets to Human Behavior. Beverly, good to have you on the program. I'm really happy to be here, Becky. Yeah, tell us what companies like Amazon.com and Netflix, what are they doing right? What they're doing right is focusing on the people that they're serving. You know, you think about what we want in these economic times is good value at a good price and somebody pay attention to us. And that's what they're doing. They're paying attention to us, not just their bottom line. It's interesting because you would think, this is so common sense. Mm -hmm. This is so easy, really, to do. Why are so few companies really grabbing onto the idea of good customer service? Well, think about this one. Southwest Airlines, they are on the top 10 list. Mm -hmm. They gave up a billion dollars in fees because they don't charge you a fee when you check your bag. So a lot of this, it's a focus on how can we make more money? How can we make more money? Or it's people at the top being out of touch sometimes, I think, with what their employees are dealing with and also what the customers are dealing with. The best companies are where the leaders are willing to get right down with the people who are actually buying their product or their service and learning about what's your experience. Yeah, that's a very good point because so often CEOs, and they have busy schedules, and this mm -hmm. is not a criticism, but you know they'll fly the corporate jet. They're not gonna wait in line at uh, an airport when there's scattered delays and you can't you get bumped from your flight and you can't find your bag and so how, do you, when you talk to CEOs do you discuss the fact that you really do have to establish that connection and I think you really do absolutely because you think about uh, Hyatt hotels I remember reading about them years ago their top management used to spend a few days every quarter doing exactly that taking the bags in at one of their hotels standing behind the front counter. How else are you really going to know what your customers are experiencing? So I agree with you, they're very busy, they have big issues they're trying mm -hmm. to solve, but what's really more important than what's the experience of working with our company? What does it feel like to work with us? Yeah, when, you're, when you mentioned uh, Southwest, mm -hmm. and they did forego a billion dollars mm -hmm. in, in fees, so this can cost a company some time and some money, can't it? Well, and that's a very good point, although I do like to say, you know, the trade-off, you have to ask, though, Southwest, they're filled all the time. Everybody wants to fly on their planes, and they're not dealing with, think about the cost of customer complaints, the cost of upset employees, because I'm tired of a customer yelling at me. So what's interesting is we have a lot of these, what I might call soft costs, that come from the relationship aspect, the communication aspect, those aren't necessarily being looked at on the balance sheet, but they're sure as heck being felt by the company day by day. And so many companies um, started offshoring their customer service, uh, especially technology companies, mm -hmm. I think much to the frustration of the consumer here in the United States. Are companies getting away from that, or do they find that the cost savings by offshoring really o offsets any kind of, you know, upset that you might cause with your customers? I think that is a philosophy. There are definitely companies who say this is the way we're going to do it. We have to add so much infrastructure customer service wise we have to do it at the cheapest price. But the reality is that there are problems fraught with that. So in some ways what I say to companies is you know pick the obstacle that you most want to deal with, right? Just because you're paying people less on an hourly basis you may be dealing with frustrated customers because they don't feel heard, they don't feel like the language barriers is uh, effective for them. So it's almost like I say to set your goals. What is it that you really are trying to do here? Because if it's purely just profitability you got to look at all the elements going into that. And what advice do you have for consumers who feel like they, first of all, they can't get a human being on the phone. Secondly, when they do, they, you know, they've been kind of um, pra well practiced in kind of phrases they use over and over again. It's almost impossible to get a senior manager to someone who can actually make a big change or decision. So what advice do you have for consumers? So here's the hard part, Becky. We actually have to, when we're about to engage and in some ways feel like we're going into battle, we have to make sure that we stay calm, 
right? We don't get unnecessarily upset because these people in most cases are not trained how to really deal with the consumer and they're surely not trained how to deal with somebody who's irritated and upset. So first of all, we have to go at it. This person on the other end of the phone is not my enemy. You know, this mm -hmm. I have a goal in mind too, right? I want to get something. And they're just trying to earn a salary as well. You know, absolutely. Think about they're not armed, right? They're not given tools no. either. So what we have to do though is what I encourage people to do is ask that person, look, can you put yourself in my shoes for a minute? Let me go through with you what it took for me to get on the phone with you, what the experience is, and here's what I want from you. I want you to help me. What are the options? What choices do I have here? So you almost have to try to get them off their script uh -huh. and relate to them kind of one-to-one, -one, human to human. But see, we don't usually do it because we're so upset that we're yelling, then they're yelling back, yeah. and we don't solve all anything. Of the needles off the, <laughs> off the scale there. <laughs> yeah. All right, Beverly, it's all in understanding other people, and we want to thank you so much for swinging by today. Thank you, Becky. It was great. We'll be back with more 12 on the Money after a break.